Hello again, welcome to tutorial 13 on propagation. You're doing the foundation theory course with the Radio and Electronics School and my name is Ron, VK2DQ. We're going to be talking about propagation in this tutorial and it's going to be a fairly brief tutorial because there isn't a great deal about radio wave propagation you need to know for your assessment. That is one of the reasons why I keep recommending to you that you purchase from the Wireless Institute of Australia the publication Your Entry into Amateur Radio. Not because I'm not giving you enough information here, I'm giving you here the information that you need to know for assessment and sometimes just a little bit more. But in the manual uh, there is lots of extra information and it's actually marked extra information on propagation. Uh, so it would be good for you to look at that if you could get hold of that uh, publication. So let's look at propagation in terms of your assessment. Radio waves above a few megahertz, above three or four megahertz, only travel in straight lines. That's the reason, I'm just going to change my pen colour, that's the reason why the ionosphere is so important to us because the ionosphere enables radio waves to be refracted and bent around the Earth. <coughs> the ionosphere is a layer in the Earth's atmosphere and what happens is energetic radiation from the Sun, mostly ultraviolet radiation, travels through the Earth's atmosphere and ionizes some of the gases in the atmosphere. Now the strange thing is this ionization occurs in three main layers. The F layer is the highest and you need to remember that. You don't have to remember the altitudes here but you, and they're only approximate anyway. But you do have to remember the names of the layers and their relative heights, highest to lowest. So F, E, D are the names of the layers. D layer is very close to Earth's surface, about 60 kilometres, and the F layer can get much higher than 180 kilometres. Also, you'll notice on this slide that we have daylight on one side and nighttime on the other. When it is night time, the D layer disappears. You won't be assessed on that. So the, the only reason I'm showing that is to you is to show you that the conditions of the ionosphere are different through day and night. So this is going to determine who you're going to be able to talk to uh, around the world at any particular time. <clears throat> if a radio wave is refracted, like, like this one is being refracted at night time, and it's been reflected off the Earth and then refracted again. It would go back to the ionosphere and be refracted again. Let's have a look at this one. This wave is going into the ionosphere, a charged layer in the ionosphere. The reason why the sun charges the atmosphere is because it rips electrons off the gas molecules and leaves the, ion leaves the atmosphere with uh, positive and negative ions. This wave was refracted, that is refraction. The process is called refraction from the ionosphere, not reflection. So the wave is refracted from the ionosphere so that's refraction, comes back to Earth. This is reflection that's occurring here. The wave hits the ionosphere again, is refracted once more, comes back, is reflected once more and so on. And the heights and density of the charge density of the ionosphere is different between day and night. Depending on the degree of ionisation of the atmosphere, 
this will determine the highest frequency we can use and that frequency is called the MUF the maximum usable frequency MUF for example see it we're, we're in daytime here this wave is above the maximum usable frequency so this wave will not be refracted back to earth it goes into the ionosphere the ionosphere tries to bend it or sorry refract it or well, bend is alright and it escapes to space so this frequency because it's not refracted is above the MUF the maximum usable frequency for this time of day and year so depending on the ionospheric conditions the maximum usable frequency uh, will vary uh, in the summer with high <coughs> degree of ionization the maximum usable frequency can go up to close to 30 megahertz the F layer during the day can actually split into two separate layers the highest of those layers is called the F2 and the lowest is called the F1. Be aware of that, that in daylight hours the F layer can, can split into two distinct layers. So in, indeed during the daytime we have four layers, the highest being the F1, F2, E and D. At night time we just have an F layer. The primary determining factor in how much the ionosphere becomes charged is due to ultraviolet radiation from the sun. But there's also something else that happens on the sun called sunspots. And these are dark spots. I'll draw them. I can't draw them. I don't have a pen. Uh, they appear like little black spots. See these little black spots here? That they are sunspots. And the spottiness of the sun varies over an 11 year cycle. So for example in 2000 roughly, well just after 2000, we had a maximum amount of sunspot activity. That was a peak in solar activity, sunspots. Sunspots are just areas of the sun which are cooler than the surrounding areas by a couple of thousand degrees. And for that reason they look black. They're not, they're not black, they're, they're very, very hot. And when the solar cycle is at its maximum, like just after the year 2000, radio wave propagation is extremely good because high sunspot activity means a high degree of ionisation of the ionosphere. So radio amateurs hang out for this peak. And you'll notice we're about here now in 2012, about there really. And so the predicted peak is, is getting very, very close. And radio amateurs, once they get that peak, they can communicate globally with just a few watts and very little effort. So this, the 11 year sunspot cycle is, has a dramatic effect on radio wave propagation and the ionisation of the ionosphere. You don't need to know a lot more about the sunspot cycle. Primarily you need to know the sunspot cycle exists and that it's 11 years long and that the sun affects the ionosphere and in turn that determines how well we can use our radio communications globally via the ionosphere. That's it for tutorial 13. Thank you for listening. Catch you back in the next one. Cheers for now.